the delts and the quads are the largest muscle groups in the upper and lower body. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And I thought I would chat with you guys about this a little bit because this is uh, a bit of a misconception and it's people tend to see these muscles uh, not as they really are in the body due to the illusion our skeleton oftentimes creates. And so accordingly, you know, when people think about what the big muscle groups are, right, they, they get it wrong. Um, and I think a lot of people, particularly men, tend to see the upper body muscles as bigger than the lower. But the reality is when cadavers have been looked at and averages have been taken, it's not even close. Like if you guys look at some of the studies, all the major muscle groups in your lower body are way bigger than your upper. And particularly the quads. So some people are like, oh yeah, glutes are just as big as quads. No, they're not. No, the quad, the, the quadriceps are the largest muscles in the body by such an enormous margin that nothing else is really close. Um, meaning, like glutes are something like, I forget the number, like 60% the size of quads. And they're the second biggest muscle. And then calves are like right there with them. You know, depending upon uh, individual genetics there. And I think people, they don't grasp that because, again, they're not realizing it's just over a bone. All right, so look at the size of your quads relative to something like arms and think about the fact that there's just a single bone running through there. It's not multiple bones. It's one bone under there. And it really isn't that, that big of a bone, like in terms of thickness. Um, and, but then they, they see the upper body and they think, oh man, pecs and lats and all that, right? They're like, those are big. But they're really thin muscles stretched across an entire rib cage. Because when you look at the skeleton, where's most of the skeleton mass and, and overall just size? Well, it's, it's the, uh, the whole torso, right? Look at that whole rib cage. Look how expansive that is to house all those organs, right? And when you look at, look at that big shell that it creates, it's like, oh, so much of that upper body is really just bone. And, and that creates a different, a, an illusion of size. So really muscles like the pecs and the lats are not as big as people think they are, right? They're not as big as people think they are. So when we start breaking it down, it goes something like, in order, uh, quads, glutes, calves, hamstrings, okay? Those are the biggest muscles in the body. Like nothing in the upper body really gets that close. No individual muscle. Now, there are a couple more muscle groups in the upper body and less total muscle mass. So again, there's more complexity to training it. Uh, but, you know, again, that is a misconception a lot of people have. They think that the glutes uh, are actually bigger than the quads, and they're not. The quads are substantially larger. Okay, so what should this tell us from a muscle training priority? So if you're trying to gain as much muscle as possible, we're about to go somewhere with this. Particularly if you're looking for certain metabolic and health benefits. Well, obviously, lower body should be prioritized, and then quads to a large extent. Right? It makes sense. If we're trying to get all those health and metabolic benefits, that's one reason I tell people, look, if it's health you're chasing, if it's uh, controlling diabetes, reducing diabetes, reducing cancer, controlling body fat, I mean, lower body is king, all right? For so many obvious reasons. The fact that you'll use it more walking around, burns through more energy, yeah, all that, but just in terms of sheer size, so even at rest. Now we get into the upper body and, and again, there's a lot of misconceptions there. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize, so let's take the, the, the major muscle groups. We don't need to go into individual forearm muscles and, and all of that. So what do we have? Pecs, lats, delts, traps. That's not getting into the smaller stuff. We don't need to go into all the rhomboids and terrace minor. Okay, so our big ones outside of the arm are gonna be pecs, delts, lats, traps triceps, biceps. And a lot of people don't realize the, the order of size there, okay? Half of those are about the same size on average. You know, give or take 10%, right? Roughly the same size. You know which ones those are? Actually, it's about four of them. Pecs, triceps, lats, and traps. All about the same size. You know what the smallest major muscle is in the upper body? The bicep. 
but because of where it's prominently displayed from the front, all right, we can see it right there, look at that. We think it's bigger than it is. But it's, it's actually about 60 to 70% the size of those other muscles. So even the tricep is, is considerably bigger. But yeah, a lot of people aren't aware that they think lats are massive. No, lats are about the same size as your pecs and triceps and then traps. Traps are just as big as lats also. People will go, well, why it looks so expansive? Because well, they'll see my lats from behind. Because it's a thin muscle. It's a thin muscle that's spread over a large area. Okay, but in terms of actual size, it's, it's really thin. So it, it doesn't look, it looks bigger than it is from the outside view. So then we get into the delts. Delts are way bigger. Now, again, people are looking at me right there going, I mean, I'm looking right there to your pecs and lats are bigger than your delts. But the delt wraps all the way around and it's thicker. So keep in mind the bony structures under there. Then when you see big delts on a bodybuilder, think about how much meat has to be there covering that whole little shoulder capsule. So when it's been measured, you know, again, in cadavers and, and, and studies, there's more weight there. The delts, just like we're talking about the quads, the delts are considerably larger than all those other muscles. It's not just like 5%. It, it's something like 40, 50% larger. So your delts are bigger than your pecs. They're bigger than your lats. But again, the others are spread thin across the rib cage, right? The delts wrap all the way around and they are thicker. So the actual thickness between the muscle, the, you know, the, the extreme of the muscle under the skin and the bone is bigger. So again, let's come over to that other point. If you want more size in the upper body, it does make some sense to prioritize the delts a little bit. And interestingly enough, even though the delts are bigger, because people say, oh, the delts are a small muscle, they'll treat it that way. No, it's not. It really isn't. It's bigger than all those, everything else in the upper body. But a lot of the muscle, the, the movements that hit it, directly have really good stimulus to fatigue because a lot of the we can get really weird angles that put it at leverage disadvantages i mean look how hard it is to do a lateral with a 20 or 25 pound dumbbell but it's working all three heads of the biggest muscle in the body yes we think of it as a side delt movement but it really hits the front and rear extremely hard more than enough to, to actually cause them to grow plus the upper trap but look how that little bitty light weight, it's so hard to move it because we can't stack. Like look at a bench press, look how we can stack those leverages to our advantage. You're not doing that. So something to think about from a stimulus to fatigue, how much muscle mass can you stimulate with some of the shoulder movements that we do relative to the weight being used? So again, if we're trying to gain as much muscle as possible, a lot of these delta exercises bring a lot to the table. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.